Hey there folks, today we are taking a look at Wingspan. We're going to teach you how to play and then if you stick around to the end, we're going to give you some tips and tricks uh, for strategy and maybe scoring some more points, getting off to a better start and that kind of stuff. So stick around for the end for that. If you do find this helpful, please do uh, consider subscribing or liking, sharing, whatever you want to do. It is helpful to me. So if you want to see more of this content or help out, I do appreciate that. But let's go ahead and just dive right on into it. So set up here, we're going to go ahead and run through everything you need to know. Alrighty folks, so I am going to have my phone in my hand here showing you all of this stuff. Hopefully that will help give you some up close views of these things. So here is the global setup where what we're going to do for uh, every game for just the whole board. Everyone's going to be interacting with these items and then you're going to have your own setup with your board and that kind of stuff. But this is what we're going to have. You're going to have all these tokens. You're going to put those in a pile like so. Your eggs, put those in a pile. Those are your resources you're using throughout the game. Then you've got your birds. You're going to have three of these birds out. Uh, some of these components, I should say, are from some of the expansions. And so like this right here, I don't believe comes with the game. And then some of these, these tokens right here are wilds and those do not come with the original game. That's gonna be a different game. And then just some of the colors of eggs are different as well. And you can always look at the corners right here. So the corner of this card has, if it'll focus on that, the corner of that card has some letters and that'll show you what uh, expansion that is in. So this is the Oceana one. You can see the O right there, but the regular ones, they're not going to have anything in the corner, corner of them. Then we're going to take these cards. These are the uh, bonus scoring cards. We're going to have those just in a stack off to the side for now. We're going to go ahead and take all the food and put it in the bird feeder right there. That's the food you can take throughout the game. And then we've got this right here. This is going to be the round end um, bonus points that you're going to score. So everyone's going to be looking, trying to do different, uh, trying to do uh, different things to accomplish these goals. So you're all, all doing the same thing to accomplish them. For example, after at the end of round one, you're going to uh, score points based on how many birds you have in the forest. That's going to be this top area up here. So whoever, whoever has the most is going to take their cube and then put it up there and they're going to get four points and obviously, you know, second place you can read. So one thing to keep in mind is you do get more points later on at different rounds. So you could be first in all of these. You will score for all of these, but it might end up something like that. And so you might want to focus on these down here because they are worth more points the further they go on. Then for your individual player setup, you're each going to have a mat. So go ahead and take one of those, put it in front of you, and then you're going to take two of these cards right here with these backs. Those are your bonus cards. And now you've got some decisions to make. You have to choose one of the two of those. And then over here, we have five foods. So here are all the different foods in uh, the base game right here. You've got the cherry, the worm, the fish, the wheat, and the uh, mouse right there, or the rat. And so you've got one of each of those that you start with, and then you start with five random birds. And you get to choose of these 10 things, five to keep. So you could keep all of the food or the birds, or you could split and do whatever you want in any combination. So I could keep these two birds, let's say, actually let's do those. Let's keep those two birds. I'll just discard these right there. And then I'll go ahead and keep the fish, the cherry and the wheat. Then I'll discard these. So I have a total of five things that I kept right there. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and um, consecutive birds with ascending wingspans. Well, that sounds kind of interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. And then I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to discard that one back there. So now we are set up and ready to play. The only other thing I don't have out on the table, I don't know where it is right now, there is a first player token that you can just place in front of the first player and that will rotate throughout the game just so you know who played first that round it helps you track while the game is going. All right, so playing the game, let's show you your actions. Your first action here is play a bird. So you're using these tokens. These are going to be your 
uh, action cube showing you how many actions you have in the round. So round one, uh, you have eight right here cubes. And like we said, at the end of round one, you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it on the board here wherever you finish. So the next round, you're only gonna have seven. So that's just one thing to keep an eye on, but you should be able to uh, really get a lot of uh, I want to say bang for your buck almost with the birds you play those will be able to do some special things out here on the board so you have less actions but you're still able to do quite a bit because of that so up here you could play a bird so this is your play a bird um, action that you would take so if I wanted to play a bird I would take one of my birds and now is a good time just to look at some of the different things that are on this. So this is Anna's Hummingbird right here. You can see uh, the name of it. And then on the top up here, you can see all of those different locations. So this one can actually be played in any of the different locations. Some of them just have one location on it. So like this one can only be played in the wetlands and others have multiple locations. So this one can be played in either the wetlands or the grasslands. And that's why it has the two different symbols right there. But then underneath that, it shows you the cost to play that bird, the food that you have to play. So this one, you could pay one of anything. So that's what that symbol means. There are others that have this type of a cost. So that would cost two fish and one worm. And then underneath that, you have the feather that's worth points. Uh, so that's how many points at the end of the game this card is worth if you play it. You've got the nest type and then below that is how many eggs this bird can hold. So if I wanted to play this, I could go ahead and say, I'm gonna spend this wheat right here. I can spend one of anything to put this right here. And then that is playing a bird. The only other thing uh, to keep in mind, you're always gonna be playing these birds on the far left, the far left open space. So the next bird that I uh, play that has this icon here could go right here and then the one following that would go here and you can see you're going from one uh, food die here to two so you're going to get more more stuff the further up you go so if we took this and then we're able to play this later on in the game you can tell right there now we have two food that we'd get to gain and that is our second action right here so win uh, gain food from the bird feeder so we can put our cube right here you're always going to put your cube on the leftmost space that's open or on the very right of a bird if you've got a bird so if i've got this bird right here i'm going to put it just on the right there that means i get to take one food from the bird feeder so if i take this for instance let's take that out then I would get to take one of those two things. So that's no longer, I take it out, it's no longer available for anyone else to take. And we're just gonna take that right there. So you choose between those two. Now if there's only one, if there's ever only one symbol left in here, let's say everything is wheat. Just like that. I could choose to take all of these and re-roll them if I didn't want wheat, which this is just a fun, piece of the game right here is being able to roll those. It's got a fun little birdhouse. That's pretty unique. Nice roll. You got lots of options right there. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then this icon right here means that you can pay a card or this here means you can pay any food or this right here means you can pay an egg. And then you're just going to get the second thing that's there. So a secondary food, you could get an egg there or down here, you could get a card so that's just showing you what you get there and then this is where the game uh, really starts to intensify just a little bit this win activated power when activated each player gains one food from the bird feeder starting with the player of your choice so we played this action here to play food but then we would take that cube and move it down to the left so then it's on that so now this power is activated so I'd choose all right, Jeff, you go ahead and you choose first. Okay, I wanna choose the worm. And then it would come around to my turn. Oh, okay, I wanna, I wanna take the cherry. And everyone would gain food uh, as that card is saying. Then you move it over and that's just tracking your actions. So those are the actions you have left. But that's how you take that action and that's how the brown powers work. So any brown power, when you choose that action, it's gonna go down the cards. So if we have four cards here and they all have brown actions, you'd get to do all of them as it goes down. So you can really make some combinations that uh, are really cool that way. And that's gonna be true of all of these actions. They're all gonna have brown powers 
uh, potential for brown powers on the on the cards. This right here, the lay eggs action, obviously we're going to take two eggs. So we're just gonna take two eggs right here, and then we're gonna put it on this bird. Now you do need to be careful because you can see the two little egg symbols down here. That's showing us this bird can only hold two eggs. So if we took the lay eggs actions action again, we wouldn't actually have any spots to put the eggs, so we wouldn't be able to take any. So you always have to have spots to place the, the eggs. Down here, draw cards. Uh, you could take a card from here, or you could take a card blind. So if we wanted to just take a card blind, we didn't like those cards down there, we could do that, and that would just go into our hand right here. So those are the main actions right there. Uh, the thing that is definitely worth noting is all of these powers. So let's give you an example right here of what this might look like at the end of the game. So maybe if we're near the end of the game, we've got something like this going on. So you do have these when played. So immediately when you play these, you take that action, you take it only once in the game. So you're either gonna have that or uh, this brown power. I believe those are the main two in the game. I think there might be some that are pink and that's once between turns. And it's gonna say, when someone else takes a certain action, you get to do a certain action. So that's one that you just have to keep tabs on. It's a little bit more difficult, but it does say on the card exactly what it does. So this right here, when played, draw one bonus card. And those are these over here. So draw one bonus card. And that's a way you could get bonus points at the end of the game for each bird here. So actually, that's kind of cool. We would be able to draw three, uh, keep one and discard the rest. So it's just a way of uh, keeping as many as, or sorry, having more options for what is good. So let's say we drew three and we like that one, so we'd keep it. And then we'd be able to get bonus points for all of that columns with matching pair or trio of nests. So that could be something really cool you could match up. Again, we can see the nests right here. We can see the nests right there. So that is the nest type. There's a lot of different things that uh, the nests matter. So right here, eggs in that kind of a nest. So right here, we've got two eggs in that nest. And you would count that up if you had the most. You would do, do that. All right, I think that's pretty much it. We've got the lay eggs action here. If I did that, I'd take three eggs. I would skip that and skip that because those are just the win play. But then I have this brown power I'd be able to do as well. The other thing to keep in mind that is uh, easily forgotten often is if I wanted to play a bird into this second row right here, I would, I would have to, let's just give you a, a real example here. If I wanted to play this bird right here into this column right here, I would have to pay the cost right here, which is three rats, but I would also have to pay the cost of one egg up here. And so if you're putting it into this row at all, you would have to pay one egg. If you're putting it into this row, one egg, this row, it starts to get a little more expensive. You have to pay two eggs to be there. So that's something uh, definitely to keep in mind. And that is how all of those actions work. At the end of a round, you're gonna take back all of your action cubes, just like so. And then you're gonna lose one of those. So you are gonna have less and less uh, for each round. But again, you should have more brown powers and things to do there, which is uh, a nice, just a nice balance. All right, last uh, things to mention, scoring points. You do get points for every single egg that's on uh, your board. And so if I've got these eggs on the board, I would get points for those eggs right there. And then you also get points for cached food. And so sometimes it'll tell you to cash a cash food on your cards. You get points for those. Also, sometimes it will tell you to take cards and tuck them. And so this card is normally worth four points, but if it told me, hey, you can tuck this underneath another card, if I tuck it, now it's worth one point. And so you can do that, and that's worth, all of those things are worth one point for each. So we've got two points for our cherries there, two points for our eggs, and one for that tucked card. 
Alrighty folks, that is a wingspan. Now on to the tips. So here are my tips for being able to get a faster start, hopefully be able to get running and gunning at the beginning to affect the rest of the game. I think it's really important uh, to try and get a fast start if you can to help you out through the, throughout the, the rest of the game. And one thing that I uh, found is that it just seems like it's, it seems like food is the resource that you're always needing more of just to be able to play the cards that you want to play, to play the birds that you want to play. And so if you're able to, the very first five cards that you get, if you're able to um, be able to play a bird on your very first turn, that's something that I often will try to do, is keep a combination of food and a bird that I can play in this very first space up here. And so this is the uh, woods space. And if you're able to, by the end of the first round, be able to play two birds up there, that's really helpful because now you're up to being able to get two food. And that is just really helpful uh, when you're playing the game because now you're getting twice as much food and every single bird is gonna need some food to be able to be played. So that's the main thing that I uh, look for is trying to get to that two food space by the end of the first round is a generally good rule. There's a lot going on, so you can't always track everything. You're gonna have to make some decisions on, you know, is it better to pursue these round end goals? Is it better to pursue these uh, bonus cards? Sometimes there's one thing that just feels a little bit better than other and you're just gonna have to play to know but this is a game I really enjoy playing just to have fun just to discover the birds and that kind of thing it's really uh, an enjoyable game for that so it doesn't feel like it's not fun if you don't win in my opinion another thing I like to do is near the end of the game if I can just throughout the game uh, get as far up in the grasslands that's the middle one here as possible I feel like that really helps because uh, if you're able to get up to this section right here, then you're getting four eggs and every single egg is worth one point at the end of the game. And so you've got five actions at the end of the game. And if you just take the lay eggs action all five times, that's 20 points. That's a lot of points. And so obviously you'd have to have uh, spaces to put those eggs on the birds and sometimes you don't um, but there's just a lot of points that can come there in that very last round and that's often something that I'll do because there's just not enough turns to make enough other stuff happen so try and balance it out looking at all of your bonus cards there's some birds that give you bonus uh, they give you more bonus cards which can be really helpful it's sometimes a shot in the dark because it might not be helpful. Other times it's extremely helpful and they give you exactly what you need. And sometimes all of the stars line up and all the birds you wanna play, all the birds you can play, also line up with your bonus cards and these bonus um, points over here as well. And that is when you have an incredible game of wingspan. But often you're gonna have to make some choices there. So hopefully that helps out just a little bit and good luck in your next game of wingspan. Thanks a bunch.